this year. We moved to the change where uh, so that's nice. We are using to secure that basic Unix permissions and SSH authentication. So only the ops team can SSH to that server and we need specific permissions, Unix permission to see the files and to, to modify them. So today it's only the ops team, I guess, in the future, because we did that quite recently a few months ago, maybe. Maybe in the future we want to split the repositories and give the have a dev create repository that we will give access to the developers so that they, if they create new secrets in the dev environment, they wouldn't have to ask the ops team, can you add my secrets? They would be able to directly change them. Right now it's not the case, but in the next future, I guess that's what we will do. And the deployment, so as I said, the secrets are initially we modified directly on the Puppet Master. And you do VI, you edit your file, it add, git commit, git push, and when you do git push, what happens is your secrets are synchronized to the dev create packet master. So it's basically an async of the files. So what does the puppet code look like? It's very simple. We have a file statement for slash app secrets. So as I said, um, slash app secrets is where we store the secrets. So we have a virtual true and in any file in that directory protected by specific permission, so 750 for the directory and 640 for the, the files inside. Should be false, backup false, as I mentioned before. And the source, we are using the directory. So the way we manage our servers at CityGrid, so we have CityAuth, which is dev, tree, or prod. And we have city class, which is creators that identify the type of server. So a class matches a type of service, an application, a puppet class. So basically, um, in this example, the example Yes. Um, 
But I don't know if it's like a for chicken egg program because you need a key to actually decrypt the encrypted data, right? Right, and the keys reside on the master. <coughs> so, okay. So your credentials are basically in your text and the protect master. Uh, the, uh, close to, I mean, the, the key is here so you can put uh, Right, so that would mean that So you would always need that key and it would not be in the case, right? Yes. Well, I guess you would still need to have two protect masters, one for that tree, because one of the thing is the auto-signing. We don't want someone to be able to pretend I am a production seller, give me my credentials. Right. Um, I, uh, so I normally recommend that you don't auto-sign so you just get this and a wide open security uh, yeah. Yes. So you see to do like you know during the process of doing public so generally on the channel uh so we for that's yeah, that's what we do actually for the production servers. That is they've create um does not require that, but production we have in our Jenkins job provision, that's what we do. Yes, we do the search session side. But um, yeah, I guess the reason why is because we spawn instances quite often, so we like the idea of having to sign in. Yeah, yeah. But for I mean, for your Devon, uh, your voice servers, you can just you know have an overlay on my own there. Yes. Any other question? Yes. Can you use using parsing but not the first word to say the answer? And you do parsing from a Yes. Um, the reason is because we have several puppet masters. So actually, the Git hook is a shell script, which is doing a few things. It's asking because I only copy the dev and create credentials to the dev create puppet master. <coughs> so I cannot do a Git push because I don't want to copy all the files. And also because we have um, several places our infrastructure is more complex than what I presented. So I guess we'll take a little break and then bring up the next uh, presenter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, by the way, are you gonna are you gonna be posting up your slides anywhere? Yeah, sure. Or if you want to post them up into SlideShare, we could link them. Uh, SlideShare is a pretty good service. Then that way you have control of it. Just send us the URL. That would be awesome. That's a great presentation.
No, but I got, I got all this gear here. I mean, if you, you want to grab that chair, you can move.
Thank you for bringing me sir. You do are you doing the next freeze up? Yeah. Yeah, you wanna get you might as well get started. Sure. You bring down these lights so it would be easier to see the screen. Good. Good. You look marvelous. Here, let me I'll do a quick introduction. Okay, uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get started with the uh, second part of the presentation. Once again, thank you for coming for the combination LA Puppet Master User Group and Unix User Association of Southern California meetup today here, September 4th, 2014. Uh, our next uh, puppet presentation is from Robert from Red, Red A. Uh, Robert, take it away. Thank you. So my name is Robert. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview on the integration between Puppet and VMware and how I put those things together. A lot of headaches. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about me, what I do with Puppet Overview and VMware. Cloud Provisioner, which is new in 3.3. Uh, what it does, VCAC, Application Director, and Puppet. How you can create those service portals without human interaction. So your users can just go ahead and deploy applications in the cloud. Um, so this is me, my name is Roberto Covarrubias. Uh, that's my email for if you guys have any questions or any, uh, if you guys want to say hi, I'll reply within 10 minutes. Social media addict. <laughs> so what do I do? Um, I'm a solutions architect. I've been in the industry for about 20 years. Um, started, uh, used to go to Montgomery Ward and play on the computer there. Say so couldn't afford one, uh, you know the Packer Bells. So I used yeah. to go there and play with dolls and reformat them and get out of there. <laughs> it would kick me out. Um, eventually started playing with systems and I became very good on the data system. Linux, open systems, um, Windows, anything. Um, but now I'm, I'm into automation and deployments and I fell in love with Puppet. And you know I've always been a VMware guy so. Like, there's got to be some interaction between those two, right? So, this is how I feel every day. <laughs> this actually, this is how I look to my coworkers. Oh, puppet guy. This is how I feel, right? So I'm, I'm controlling the world now. But, yeah, someday. <laughs> so, this is the Puppet Enterprise and VMware integration points we 2014, right? So we have the creation of VApps in the VCA Director, VCA Orchestrator, Virtual Center, and VCAC, which is the new VCA Directors coming out. I'm going to, with Application Director, which used to be called vFabric, um, through deployment of DevOps, through deployment of uh, self-service portals for different apps, different tiers, different everything. Um, and that's the, interaction, the integration of Puppet on different phases within this year, so they can provide a full, a full uh, orchestration between VMware and Puppet. Um, application Director on Puppet. Are you guys familiar with Application Director, I mean, chance? Is anybody using that? No, You're using it. Anybody else? With Ajax? That's the... Uh, so Application Director used to be owned by another company. It was actually developed in Ajax. And it's, um, it's a DevOps tool that graphically allows you to design services, application, OSs, multi nodes, multi, um, you can do correlation between dependencies, between services, between databases. There's no hardware involved. All this is virtual, which is the beauty of it, right? You can de deploy uh, environments for dev, staging, production on the fly. and with Puppet, you can actually segment those environments and apply configuration based on the on the membership that 
or the container that you have already predefined and populated. So that's application directory. And I saw there were some newbies in here, but I don't think they're here. So I'm going to pop up with those so you guys know already. So this is the Nirvana that everybody wants to do, right? On the DevOps side of the house to do <coughs> phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, and so on, depending on the application needs, whether you only need to update the OS, Tomcat, MySQL, which is the middleware, or you just want to update the application code and data. So integration between VMware and Puppet that allow you to do that nowadays. So one of the cool things that you have now is that you can actually create templates based from Cloud Provision, which is within the Puppet realm. And what does it do? So Cloud Provider allows you to create templates within Virtual Center without interaction or going into Virtual Center, right placing and doing that. You can call this Cloud Provider templates within Puppet and you will create your virtual machines and everything. Now, once you create the virtual machines, if those virtual machines have the, the Puppet installed in there, they will join the, the Puppet Master and be part of the group that depends on your Puppet comp uh, configuration files you have and you know what type of environment you belong to. So once you kick that, then you start pulling the, the whatever the services, whatever the configurations that they have in there. So this is truly automation within Puppet. Um, it's very, very simple to config. You just need to create a, um, a file that pod. You input four different um, settings, which is your vSphere server, username, password, and then this is a key. They're like, how the hell do I get that? It seems long. You just run the command of if you want to list the nodes, and it will spit it back saying, I, this is the key that I'm expecting. Why don't you give it to me? So you go ahead and copy that key and put it on, on your default file, and it will allow you to go to the next step, which is the listing of the VMs in there. So you just run the puppet node underscore VMware list. It will go into your virtual center, finding all the virtual machines, and it's going to flag them whether it's the template is a false or the template is true. If the template is false, that means it's a VM that's on, and you cannot copy or clone or do anything like that. So if the template is true, then hey, I'm going to create an, a template. And guess what? That's the puppet template. So that means that I can utilize that and start deploying my code, deploying any of my services in there. And it really takes about 15 minutes to deploy a full-blown uh, puppetized template, which you have previously configured, of course. I'm not going into that. But, um, so that's the cloud provisioning. Do you guys have any questions? Here? Are you guys using it? Pretty simple to use this, right? This works on any version of these here? Uh, I believe 5.1 and up. Okay. Give me vCenter. Center. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in vCenter. Center. Uh, yeah, 5.1 and up. Give me vCenter. Yeah. Center. Yeah. Just do it on like. No. Is there a way to do the uh, um, user certificate instead of a third party password for the. Or was that with the hash was? No, so the hash, you have to, uh, you get the hash within the same network that you're on. So you can, you're, you can do that from external resources. You have to give them the same. Uh, uh, hold on a second. So you, that's the public hash you get back after you input the password. Okay. You don't get it without just doing it. Any more questions? What I meant was, is there a way to not store the third type of password? For no, you have to do that. So you can actually just type it, in, and then it will, it will send it and it comes back. Oh, but it's a okay. secure text, yeah. Okay. So this is a Puppet Enterprise and VCAC. A 
it's a full ecosystem of uh, pretty much a self-service portal where you go. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, with VCADC, App Director, or like you have Clicker, and you have probably like another bunch of like ten different guys that I saw at VMworld that offer kind of the same functionality of deploying applications, deploying services, deploying everything, pretty much as a service to a portal, and they interact with public. Um, because Puppet keeps everybody sane in there, you know, same configurations, same uh, settings, same everything across all that. So VMware and their auto provisioning tools they just provide you with the ecosystem for IIS, platform as service, desktop as service, and Puppet is the one that keeps all the configuration, the drift, uh, make sure it doesn't go away, doesn't go out of um, out of sync and all the stuff, right? Um, this is how they get into a happy relationship. The way that application director interacts with Puppet is that it, you have to create what is called the deployment environment. Deployment environments, once you have a very predefined your resources and the, the templates that you have for those deployment env uh, environments. What's available for me? What are my physical resources? Mm -hmm. But you don't do that because that's actually gets provisioned by the IT people. Um, so anybody in DevOps shouldn't worry about that because you have already pre-requested that. So um, as you can see, it's a cloud provider. A cloud provider can be a physical um, <clears throat> a physical resource uh, of a pool of resources on virtual center. It can be a Hyper-V, it can be an Amazon, it can be a, uh, uh, what's the other one? Google, Rackspin. Um, it can be a Docker also, it can be a, a container in Docker. And those containers actually, once they get provisioned to you, you can deploy to anything in that. And that's the beauty of it, that you can actually abstract any any, any underlaying hypervisor or physical uh, stuff in there. So once you create your environment, <clears throat> then you we have to import the Puppet Master instance. And the Puppet Master instance comes in um, as a solution instance, I'm gonna spell solution there. It's probably solution. Um, so how do we bind these two together, right? So there's um, the guys actually at VMware have done a great job of doing a, a simple command. On previous versions from 3.2, you actually had to export and import all the certificates from the Puppet Master, from the Puppet Node. You have to make them tag together, and then if they didn't like each other, it was a pain in the butt because sometimes you copy and paste and you add an extra character in there, and the keys are not the same, so a lot of troubleshooting. Um, as you can see, it's a very simple command. You just give it the application director server, the environment that you're trying to deploy the instance into, and magic happens, right? All this stuff gets inputted by itself because it gets all the stuff from Puppet, Deploys it into application director and says, "Okay, let's talk to each other. Let's let's orchestrate." Um, all this stuff gets plugged in, and as well as this thing right here, which means that depending on the on the OS that you are deploying the agent into, once that agent talks to, um, I'm sorry, application director deploys the agent, detects the the, the hardware level, detects the OS. And it's going to download from uh, AWS the package corresponding to that, and it will install the agent for that for you. And this is how I have my modules in my Puppet Master. All these guys are actually translated into services. Services that actually you can deploy and you can. Um, Get all the parameters that you pass to Puppet. You can do the, the CLI to the Puppet Enterprise uh, portal, or you can just input them here once you create your application sets. And this is how you create the application blueprint Puppet layer. So, application blueprint would allow you to create multiple OSs, multiple. Um, Dependencies, you can actually tie the bindings as you're going to see from Puppet. It goes to uh, from Apache, it goes to MySQL. This is going to install a database server 
It's going to make sure the firewall rules are compatible with all, <coughs> all the VMs within the, um, the application. It's going to create a three node cluster of front end Apache web servers. Um, you can even deploy a load balancer in there and have Puppet open the ports for that, do the wrong routing. Um, talk to, uh, if you want to patch talk to uh, RabbitMQ, it will do that as well for you. It's something you do just by drag and drop. Um, and there's more settings down here, but I just didn't put them. I want to hide them from there. I want to be secrets. <laughs> um, so that's the application blueprint. As you can see, Puppet is the one that's going to be deploying all those services. All those services are there, all those services and modules are actually classes predefined previously on your Puppet Master. So any settings that you have in there, you don't need to reconfigure them all over again. Although you can do some configurations on the fly, you can change parameters left and right because some customizations require every time you deploy a new environment. Um, you can tell that, okay, I want this to be part of the environment development, um, production, Staging. If you're production, then you get all the secrets, like I was talking about. You know, you get different uh, set of rules for security, different firewall rules. Um, so this is how the deployment or the workflow happens within application director. So once you define your your application blueprint and the puppet services that you want to deploy in there, then you go into what is called the application properties, and this is before pre-deployment, before you're going to fire up and create that application. Um, all this stuff, it only gets defined once, so you can, and you can also have different versioning of the, of the, of the application. Let's say in an application you have a different um, NTP server, you can create a different application versioning. It's going to be version 1.0.1 if you change an NTP service. Um, all these parameters can be included through Puppet CLI. You can even create a parameters um, file with that. Once you deploy your agent, you can tell it to run a script after that. Or you can actually change this when you're, when you're um, on the application properties before creating or before deploying it. As you can see, <coughs> MySQL firewall Firewall. This is because we have multiple nodes. Everything gets um, customized there. And this is how it looks before deploying it. It's going to go through a pre-execution task. That's going to mean it's going to deploy the VMs. It's going to deploy the agents. It's going to deploy everything that it needs. It's going to give static IPs if you require that. It's going to do um, DHCP for whatever, for which VM you specify that as well. It's going to register any service that need to authentication services with blue LDAP, whatever you want to do. That's on the base template. It's going to install the puppet agent. It's going to register if you have auto sign uh, in with the puppet master. It's better. If not, you just have to go and click accept. Or actually, you can do CLI as well. Um, once it's done, it's going to start going through all these workflows. You can see it goes from solid puppet agents, it's going to start the firewalls, and it's going to go to MySQL, depending on which VM um, the services got deployed previously. As you can see, it's, it's going to do the binding also from the Apache to the MySQL database. And that's stuff that you predefine again. On the little corner, you can create you can create scripts on the fly, and you can tell them to do pre-post, after-post, um, after reboot. You just assign variables to that to the machines. There's some variables that are predefined for you. Every time you a machine, you have a you have variables you can work with. And once you're done, you're happy with the way the, the workflow is going to uh, go. You can either publish the app to a portal. Or you can deploy to make sure it works, uh, to make sure that everything's sane, um, nothing broken. But if you're happy, 
then you can always deploy it to what your business unit will see, what the people will actually, some developers just want to come in and look at the um, application like Puppetize, right? That's my application that I just uh, showed you the workflow. And that's the end of a um, happy relationship between uh, uh, VMware and Puppet. <laughs> so that's all I have. Any questions? Well, everybody knows that the eight ball is black. How come you're coming? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, they come in different colors now. It's, it's, it's like the Lotto, you know, the Powerball. Well, I hope you guys um, found this helpful. And uh, that's my email. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I have a quick question. Sure. How much uh, overlap did you find between what uh, ECAC was doing and what could have been done natively inside Puppet Enterprise, you know, as far as like defining infrastructure, <coughs> you know, VMs and, and that kind of thing? So there's only like an initial um, investment of time creating the templates making sure the templates work. Once you have those templates with the Puppet agent and there's some customization scripts you need to add for the startup, just every time you change the name of the, uh, if you auto deploy this through regular virtual center tools, you will deploy, you have to change the host name, then you have to change the, the agent. You can even do auto script to pull the agent and install it. And then you have to assign the groups. Um, all that takes a little bit of, uh, it would take you, let's say, a day less than a day to create the entire environment without any services. Then you pop it, once you start pop it runs, I would say about day, two days of, of work to get a full app working and the bindings and everything. It will take about a day to do that on, on, on VCAC, but you only do it once. And you provide that to multiple people, multiple uh, business units, and they can deploy them themselves after that. So you don't have to go through the hassle of creating every time you're doing a repetitive task, which is why I like Puppet, because it replaces the human interaction and repetition, right? So by doing that, you're actually saving yourself time, so you can dedicate. So is the value of VCAC, is that, is that the, the portal front end? It's a portal front end, so it's pretty much you just go and order whatever you need from that. And it gets auto deployed without having. Um, you can have interactions like he's having the same way he's having people um, approve the request for when he has code changes. The same way you can have if you require uh, a VM with different specs, um, open ports, different firewall rules. You can add those exceptions in there, and it will allow you to, to do requests and approvals and all that. Um, it saves a lot of time because you only define these ones. You can reuse the code. It keeps the versioning of, of the applications being deployed. Um, with the promotion of uh, environments within Puppet, you can orchestrate that as well with, um, with Application Director. Um, the way you can do that with Puppet by itself, you can do that, that as well. Um, however, the, the provision of the applications and the services and all that might have to be manually or there's only some uh, interaction with a human being. Uh, this is only one to set it up and no more humans. <laughs> we all become monkeys. <laughs> uh, are, are you going to be posting up your slides anywhere? I can, yeah. Okay, uh, great. If you could maybe send it to the meetup, post it up on the meetup site or something. Okay. Link it up. All right. Okay. Well, all thank right. you very much, Roberto. Unless there's any other questions. Didn't need to cut the question short. Was there was there any more questions? Okay, and uh, uh, Julian, do you have any other uh, LA uh, Puppet Master User Group? Do you do you have a speaker for next month? No, that's the fine. So basically, I try to keep this meetup as frequent as possible. Yes. And no, you do pretty good. So the frequency right now is more like yearly days. Which is kind of disappointing for like just for oh, didn't, didn't you, you did one at uh, you did one about a month ago. Like I wasn't involved. I mean, oh, said, so? yeah, but I, I, I couldn't make it. So was it good? Was it? I didn't make it either. I think <laughs> <laughs> somebody spoke and somebody showed up. Yeah. It just wasn't us. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. Okay. So well, I cool. I think I, I think I wanted to, but I was like.
So I think the problem for this meetup are not the the place, the pizza, or the beer. We we get that figured out in yeah. very quickly. Yeah. It's uh, the speaker, exactly. So yes, we that's the people, most important part. We need to get involved, interested, and, and if you have something cool and fancy you did at, at, at work, at the work. If you give me enough heads up, I can prepare something and uh, tell my coordinator to not have to travel to this happens. Yeah. You have a month. I mean, just, just don't meet on the first Thursday of the month unless we're <laughs> doing a co co meeting. <laughs> and uh, so I don't. We have some poster. We have um, movie company. So well, we'll put the other one. If we, is there anybody else who wants to present? Because that's oh, really okay. key to keep this thing going. Yeah, yeah. these are USC. Yeah. Like, can you, can you yeah. Well, so, and, well, you you have the bigger challenge because it's just public. yeah, just public. Yeah. And as you can see, it doesn't have to be a full blown presentation. You can take a few smaller t smaller talks and put them together. So. Anyone? Else, yeah. I, like, you know what I mean. Like you can ping Jocelyn on, on the meetup uh, page, ping the organizer. Say hey, I'm interested. This is the topic of the. You can even propose the meetup too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to a date that's to your liking, as long as it's not the first Thursday of the month, <laughs> unless it's a UAC <laughs> presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, hey, please. We try. We, we, yeah, we need to talk to. Uh, Oh, uh, Chris. Chris, yeah. Oh, chef, would be nice to have like not a like, but maybe a comparison and a fair comparison. Yeah, we we almost had a third speaker, and it actually is good that he didn't do that third talk. So there there may be a, another potential one. That yeah, that would be an awesome talk. Oh, or even we didn't see that And also, don't forget that scale the call for papers for scale the Southern California Linux Expo is open, right? I'm sure Puppet Labs is going to be hosting. Puppet camp. Puppet camp day there, yeah. and that's uh, in February. So start, if you can, you work on your presentation now. You might even make it. You, you might even be able to get it into Puppet Camp as well. Good. There are lots of benefits to doing that. Uh, okay, and, and one other thing. Thank you, Julian, for hosting this and keeping it going. Um, <laughs> On the UAC side, uh, uh, Adrian Otto will be speaking uh, next month on uh, OpenStack related talk, and then John will be doing his uh, Linux network performance enhancements, which should be very interesting as well. And of course, we're always looking for speakers too, and we will always do configuration management talks every now and then. So, thank you. Thank you.